Okay, so continuing where I left off last time, uh, I'm now cutting a hole in the side of the enclosure to make room for the longer laser tube that I'm going to install. In addition to cutting the clearance hole, I'm also drilling and tapping a bunch of holes around the perimeter so I can bolt on this uh, extended enclosure box that I welded up separately. It's a pretty straightforward welding job, so I didn't take any video. Sorry. Here's a close-up of the laser tube mounted in place. Um, you can see the uh, 3D printed brackets that I showed in the last video used here. Um, and then for wiring up the laser, the tube has these contacts that are just bits of wire sticking out of the glass and they're really fragile. And because they're in the glass, you can't solder to them. So um, I've just taken this, this is the ground side and the wire is just wrapped around the the metal post. Um, the high voltage side is done exactly the same way except I also globbed a whole bunch of just like clear bathroom silicone caulking all over it to um, further insulate it. I took a break from modifying the actual laser to build the fume extractor which has a HEPA air filter and an activated carbon filter. I won't go into a lot of detail here about how I did it because really I just followed a detailed instructables which I'll link to below. <laughs> the limit switches definitely don't work. Okay, try it. Buttons. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, now push run. Oh my god, it's doing it. Okay, so this is my setup for squaring the two axes. I have some extrusions here clamped to the rails just to give the square here some nice surfaces to touch. Uh, and just tighten down the belt and it's pretty square. Okay, uh, so the thing that I've been wrestling with the past few days is getting the laser beam aligned. Uh, the overall goal for alignment is to make sure that the beam travels vertically through the center of the lens that lives right here, um, and that it does so regardless of where the cutting head is throughout the workspace. So um, that means that the beam coming from the back, going up here, and then traveling this way um, needs to be aligned in parallel with the mechanical axes. Um, so to do that, I made this little sheet metal piece um, that clips over the mirror. That way I can put tape on it and pulse and not be afraid of damaging the mirror or whatever hardware there. Um, so uh, for example, with with this axis here, um, I would move the ax, move it up there, pulse it once, um, move it all the way back, pulse it again, and make alignments to the mirror back there until it hits the same spot. Um, along both of those sides, then I know that the beam is aligned to that axis, and then I can uh, move my tape to the next stage over here, and then again align this mirror until it's angled with this. Okay, ready? Here we go. Yep. Um, I watched a few videos of how to do this, and 
uh, <laughs> probably in those videos, they didn't convey what an iterative process this is. So you can see I've been at it for a little bit. Um, the reason I found it so iterative is that the window that you can hit to make it um, go through the lens here is pretty small. So even if I got everything aligned, um, I would have to scoot everything around to shift the beam to the center. The reason it's important to get it centered, this is my cartoon lens, so if the beam doesn't hit the lens in the middle, if it hits off to the side, then the angle of the cut, or the, the cut is going to be angled as a result. Um, so the best way I've found to confirm this is I can take off this air hose or this nozzle and Make sure to align the tape edges to the axis so that if you do have to move it, you have an idea of what direction you need to go to correct it. And just crease along the outside so I know where the circles are. Um, now I'm just going to turn everything on. Uh, hopefully it's not too loud and you can still hear. You can see I got the limit switches in, so it's homing now. Okay, so I have this tape down here, so uh, make sure you're wearing your um, glasses that are uh, opaque to the, to the laser to protect your eyes anytime you have the laser on. Um, but now I'm going to pulse it. See that it's pretty well centered um, to the circle and so uh, because it looks pretty close there I can confirm that by putting the nozzle back on which you can see doesn't have a very large hole so that's the target that we're trying to hit and I can confirm the angle that the laser is hitting uh, by taking a test piece of acrylic. You can see I've used it a couple times before. I'm going to pulse it again. And if I look really carefully along the edge of the material, um, I can judge at what angle the laser is hitting the material. And so if I check that along both axes. Uh, and that looks pretty square, so finally, after many days of tuning, I'm going to call this a line. Uh, this next part is pretty dry, but I want to talk about what kinds of parameters I needed to input in the software to get it to work correctly. So if I go to Options, System Options, Manufacturing, Manufacturer Parameters, um, here for uh, datum and key direction and limit polarity, these are the ones that I messed around with to get the motors to go the right directions, um, upper, meaning having the button up and down correlate with actual motion up and down. For one of the motors I actually had to switch the, um, the leads on one of the coils for the motor in order to get this to work out. Uh, range just has to do with the size of the table. Um, I. Uh, haven't really messed around with these speeds yet. Um, down here for max power, uh, this max power has to do with the current rating that um, that the manufacturer hopefully gave you for whatever the max current is for your laser tube. So I basically put an ammeter in series with the laser tube um, and slowly cranked up this number uh, until I reached the um, peak current on my tube. I think that was like 17 milliamps. And so max power of 63 is what I got for that. So putting in this number is to make sure that whatever um, part you give it to cut, it's not gonna try and give the laser more current than what it's rated for. Um, the uh, last thing to input here is the millimeters per pulse. So. Um, I think if my motors had come with more specific specs, I could probably just know this exactly, um, given the size pulleys and belt pitch that I'm using. Um, but 
I didn't have that information and so um, an easy way to do this is to just uh, pulse two points um, and then uh, change this number accordingly. So that's what we'll do next. Now I can just measure the center to center distance between these two holes and that will compensate for the kerf width. Um, and I just keep cutting this part and tweaking the uh, pulses per millimeter number until the distance between these two holes is what I put in the DXF. Uh, and of course, I probably could have made this longer if I wanted less error in my measurement, but I think this will be okay. Okay, so it finally worked, and hopefully the next video is a lot less about getting it to work and more about doing cool projects with it. Thanks for watching.